It is no sign of mental health to be well adjusted to a sick society. You've heard this phrase before, but I am guaranteeing that you haven't heard the name Kazimierz Dabrowski. He is a renegade Polish psychologist who we're going to explore in this video because he is going to give you some huge unlocks in relation to your giftedness, your feeling of perpetual alienation, dissatisfaction, outright repulsion towards certain elements of society which are chronically eating away at you and keeping you from feeling safe, secure, and honestly wanting to be here because this chaos is really quite a lot sometimes. Fortunately, today's inner work essential has a direct guide out of this quagmire of frustration and maladjustment which is keeping us sick and alienated. What we're going to look at in this episode is the idea of positive maladjustment. Not just maladjustment, but positive maladjustment. Because Dabrowski, who was working at the end of the Second World War, he witnessed the atrocities in Poland, which if you don't know your history, there was a lot of atrocity in Poland during the Second World War, caught between Germany and Russia. I actually have a history degree and wars and genocide and all the dark stuff that you would expect from having watched the series is exactly what I studied. He came out of that hell hole of misery and still managed to connect in with that same sense of transcendent, idealistic, authentic individuation, soul growth, which later contributors like Abraham Maslow, contemporaries like Carl Rogers, and the whole human potential, humanistic movement, all started to bubble through in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, and arguably has really caught on in the 2020s, and that's what we're after today. But how do we cross that territory? How do we go from the swamp of suffering, a sense of alienation and not fitting in, and at worst and tragically most commonly being a gifted intellect or a gifted artist or spiritually sensitive person who just can't fit in? That's what we're going to try and explore. And I'm going to lead with a quote from this book. It's very difficult to pick a single quote, because as you can obviously see, this book was one of the books I've read for the first time maybe two years ago, and I got page after page of, oh my god, he said it. He finally said the thing that I've been feeling this whole time, and it somehow becomes more justifiable when a certified psychologist who unfortunately is no longer with us anymore says the thing that you've secretly held in your heart. And this is one of the things that Dabrowski said. In Dabrowski's understanding, mental health is not a state, but a process. It is more or less continuous psychological growth characterized by attempts at transcending limitations of one's biological cycle and psychological type. But what is mental health? Well, there's a different quote that I kind of paraphrased at the start. It's not being well adjusted to a sick society. But to go even further, again from the book, according to Dabrowski's definition, quote, mental health is the capacity for development toward multidimensional understanding, experiencing, discovering, and creating ever higher hierarchy of reality and values up to the concrete individual and social ideal. There's a lot in there. And if you've just switched off at the series of words that I said, this video is probably not for you. If a part of you lit up at the idea of an individual and social ideal and having a hierarchy of values and a transcendent ladder which we climb up, then Dabrowski is the guy for you. His key idea of positive disintegration is the idea that we need, N-E-E-D, all capitals, need to be positively maladjusted to that which drains us. We need to be self-alienating from society. I started feeling this when I was 10 years old. And yes, a significant element of it was. It was the emo era of the early 2000s, and I was going through my own 
prepubescent stage, but arguably I never got out of it. I always had that feeling of, this is fucked up. This is dumb. This, this way that school's working, this way that I'm in a class of 30 kids and we keep stopping because two kids are fucking off and I'm doing homework for things that I don't enjoy and I'm not getting perhaps the attention or extra time on things that I love, like poetry. This is my resentment maybe coming through. You can see my anger coming through even now in all the work that I've done. I once went onto an old memory stick that was from year seven or year eight. I would be 11, 12, maybe 13, 12, I think is the age I was. And I wrote a poem, a dark poem, written from the perspective of a soldier in the trenches. And I found this poem maybe a couple years ago and I read it. And of course, it's a 12 year old's poem, but the words that I'm using and the imagery I'm creating of like rivers of blood running down the trench and the darkness and misery and describing faces, this is like gifted artistic potential. And I remember receiving feedback on works like this, be a tick, maybe a double tick. Good work, Jordan. Maybe if I was lucky, I'd get a house point, which in the UK is like a, a sticker merit that you did a good job, but I would get that sticker merit in the same way that a kid who was at a different level of potential who just showed up and did the homework for the first time and did his first four lines of something he copied from Google would also get that. There's a whole societal issue here. It's, of course, not necessarily the fault of the school that I was at, which wasn't the best school. It's not the teacher's fault, they're burnt out. It's the whole system of 30 children, even when you're organized into sets. In the UK, you have like different developmental sets based on the grades that you get when you're 10 years old and you'll continue them through and you're kind of ranked out and it's all you know, done to try and create roughly the same level of challenge. Every child's so different. Every physically disgruntled child who wants to be playing rugby, doing tennis, physically senso, sensoromotorily, sensoromotorily, kinesthetically is an easier word to choose. The kinesthetically gifted child who's forced to sit down develops ADHD because not that he can't focus, it's that he doesn't want to fucking focus on the stupid Shakespearean sonnet. And there's me, literally sat on the next desk, same age, and I want to spend the whole day dissecting language and eating it up. And we're in the same class, six days a week. You have to become positive, positively maladjusted. It starts usually in teenage years. If you resonate with this idea that you were creatively or artistically or intellectually gifted, then an idea from the book that the Browski mentions is that you were special needs. You were special needs, not in the same way that someone who has a learning difficulty and struggles to read or write as special needs, but special needs in the sense that that's one band at one end of the spectrum with severe learning challenges, but special needs at the higher end is also ignored in mainstream education. There are alternative education systems like Waldorf, Steiner schools or Montessori schools, more you know, conscious full spectrum schools in Europe and there's a few in America as well. Very rare to find one though. They pay attention to this special needs band because if you've got a class of 30 kids, and every one of them has a level of particular giftedness. And some, objectively speaking, you don't need to take my word for it. You can think of me whatever you want. Think of yourself however you want. And I encourage you to really not practice false humility on the gifts that you know you have. If you've always felt smarter than everyone else and you've gotten the grades and gotten the results. If you've always felt more artistic or more sensitive, more spiritually, intuitively connected and you have the history to back it up in your 20s, 30s, or 40s, you're probably gifted. And it was probably alienating as fuck to be feeling that in that top band in those constricting environments for a long period of time, and maybe even in your work that you do right now, maybe in your social environment where you don't get to truly talk about what sets you on fire. You have to be positively mal adjusted. This takes us into the second idea that Dabrowski talks about, which is the namesake of the book, Positive Disintegration. He has a beautiful chart, which actually I'm going to bring up for you. 
Um, this is not Dabrowski First Hand. I've read Dabrowski First Hand. This is actually the best collection of his works and this critical commentary. It's really the place to start. But we've got these uh, these wonderful diagrams. See if you can see them. And we've got five levels of integration and disintegration. We go all the way up to level five, which is secondary integration there. And this is like peak levels of ascending to the individuated human, as it were. Unfortunately, I haven't got time to break this down piece by piece. But the idea of positive disintegration is that we need to disintegrate or experience these negative feelings of alienation, dissatisfaction, depression, addiction, um, self-doubt, a uh, desire for more, a hunger for something else than this sludge of grey and monotony to force us into that degree of authentic, self-educating growth. What I try and do with this series is encourage that self-educating, auto-therapeutic part of you. You've, you've felt it right. I'm, I'm really trying to honour that part of you that doesn't need someone else to give you all the answers, because I know you have the intelligence. That's what Dabrowski speaks to. It's why this book is so soulful. Because he says that if you stay at those lower levels and you're happy in those lower levels, you probably don't think too deeply. Or maybe you're just too scared to step outside of the boundary. But if you have a history of doing that, if you have a history of positively disintegrating through the stages of negative emotion, which Dabrowski would argue is actually a signal and a necessary stage to go through to get to that higher artistic, individuated, holistic ideal, that's where we should be. This is what we should be doing. I have a very high opinion of myself. Doesn't mean I think about myself, or talk about myself, or shove that down people's throats every opportunity that I can get. However, the honest confronting truth is that when I didn't realize how to socially calibrate and was internally feeling that sense of, fuck, I'm meant for more, the poem isn't being received. The opportunity to express myself with words and language is shut down or not, not paid attention to. Someone's watching the TV. Someone's texting on the phone. We're just playing a video game. That ate at me so much inside that I was stuck in that lower level of development where I was trying to spew and find mirrors and witnessing eyes in the wrong places. This is unfortunately the major agony that I see gifted people being locked in. Let's take an artist for an example, let's take a painter. A painter who sees the world with a different level of sensitivity, who sees the mythic and symbolic interweaving of everyday reality and wants to capture a story in colour, they can't interact with normal people, not that there is a normal person, but they can't interact to be more precise with my language. They can't properly interface with a certain level of sensation or perception which most people have in a day-to-day -day reality or even in specialist um, situations like being at a good art school. If they're truly gifted, they've taught themselves repeatedly so much of what they know and they're already quite self-reliant. They don't need so much feedback. They got to that stage because they went through the positive maladjustment and the painful part of not getting it for many, many years. And then they realized no one's going to give it to you. You just need to build it for yourself. If you feel like you're resonating with that stage where maybe you're an artist, in this example, I chose an artist, or maybe you're a writer, maybe you're a speaker, maybe you're a spiritually sensitive energy worker, and you're trying to give your gifts and show your gifts to those who don't speak your language, you are literally speaking Spanish to an English speaker. It doesn't matter how beautiful your Spanish tongue may be. It doesn't matter how much poetry pours from your mouth in that foreign language. They only know how to say si and hola, and they may even make fun of your accent. And that is incredibly, deeply alienating and wounding when that starts to happen in childhood. And most of us experience it through teenage years, but there is the option of finding a way to orient our life according to Dabrowski's ideas of getting towards this hierarchy of values and 
social contributions and really honoring the authenticity and giftedness that we can bring forwards to give something back, to present something beautiful and real to those who speak our language. If you're watching the video to this point and engaging with me, we're speaking the same language. We're both in that position of having gone through some shit, having worked through some shit, still working through some shit, and knowing a certain level of giftedness and potential is what lies ahead. That's what I try and speak to. I highly, highly recommend that you read Dabrowski for yourself. His theory was wide and deep. I've covered just a centimeter or two of the miles of territory to swap metrics randomly from centimeters to miles. I've covered a centimeter or two of the kilometers of territory that he actually goes into. Please read this for yourself. It will really give you that feeling of comfort and enthusiasm and encouragement, as well as a proven structure with historical examples and psychological studies that show if you are in that top echelon in your field, it is a moral duty to do everything that you can to orient your life in such a way that you bring out that potential. It's the moral duty to water yourself, remove yourself from shit soil and plant yourself in high quality soil and get as much sunlight, as much recharge as possible and release all that traumatic baggage to the best of your ability to properly flower and fruit and give that back. That's why we're here, in my opinion. I think if you're paying attention and clued into these ideas, you know that's why you're here. Just do it with me. We can do it and it's well worth it. I think that I'll leave it there. But fortunately, the very next video in this series is actually talking about the figure that you've probably heard about before. We're going to talk about Abraham Maslow, and he's going to give us even more steps about how we can transcend to that higher level of psychological development in a theory which wonderfully interweaves with Dabrowski. I'll see you over there, and I'm looking forward to it myself.